I swipe once. I go like this once. And it's some dude who's 13 beers deep. Yeah. And he goes, I'm going to run the half marathon tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the Coach Mutt Podcast. I'm Tim Riley. I'm joined here, as always, with Zach Zillner. Good afternoon. And uh, today we're joined with Zach Tillander. By the way, am I saying your last name? Tellander. Right? Tellander. Oh. Okay, I always do that. But I get, I've been getting it wrong. Like people have been getting it wrong since Tellander. So I just I don't re- usually correct them. But you spell Zach how? Z a c k. The correct form. All right. Maybe so the correct form. I, for a long time, would C H Zach, and he does take it personally. Yeah. It's Zach. Zach. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. It's unacceptable. No, it's like, unacceptable. All right. Well, obviously, we know who you are. Mm-hmm. And I would imagine most people listening to this know who you are. But for those who don't, just give us your background, how you got into coaching, how you ended up here with us today. So I played sports my whole life, um, played lacrosse in college. And that's where I, I mean, I've always been training since I was like 13. But that's where we had like a regimented, you know, four days a week in the weight room. Um, and then graduated college. And I felt like I had like more to give physically. Hmm. And I think I saw a like men's journal blog or something. And it was about Murph, that workout that mm-hmm. everyone knows. And <laughs> everyone does terribly, by the way. Um, <laughs> but I was like, and then it talked a little bit about CrossFit. And I was like, damn, this is like, this is pretty cool. This form, like the fact that it's a class where you're you're doing things around barbells and, you know, pull up bars and stuff like that. I was like, that's similar to what I was doing um, when I was, you know, playing lacrosse in college. And so I was like, okay, let me try this. And uh, what's funny is like, I went to this one gym or I called this one gym. It hadn't even opened yet. So I went to another gym and that decision right there changed the course of my life. You know what I mean? (laughs) Which is crazy. Like I can talk about that decision later, but basically this gym I ended up going to football players owned it. And so they're like, come on in, dude. And I immediately became homies with them. Um, started training like crazy. Hell yeah. While I hated my job. And it's classic, uh, right? what, what was the job that you hated out of curiosity? Actually, I don't think I hated it. It just was like all I would think about was training. Yeah. yeah. Which like I g- just graduated playing a sport I'd played my whole life. You would figure that you'd be ready to kind of like relax. It was like the excitement around training was equal to, if not more than my excitement for lacrosse, like growing up and wanting. What time do you train? Oh, you train so after relatable. work? After work. So like after lunch, get, you're like, all right, here's what I got going on. I today. would go on YouTube like, and yeah. yeah, I would, yeah, just whenever I could go on YouTube, watch content, whatever. And then I, I got, I would sprint out of work, get on the train and I'd have my uh, gym clothes with me and the train would stop outside our gym. So sick. We'd God, yeah, that's but, epic. Yeah, if I was lucky too, I could grab like a C4 on like <laughs> at the train yeah, station or whatever, <laughs> yes, you know? Yes. So I did that to the point where like, I started like helping people out and they're like, oh, you should try coaching. So I got a, my CrossFit level one, this is 2013, CrossFit level one. And then we got into weightlifting like hard. Mm-hmm. So we were like, let's see how good we can get our snatch and clean and jerk. Um, and that's where things, you know, turned for me. I've always had CrossFit kind of in the back pocket. I have my level two. I'm currently, I like, I'll go take classes and stuff. Cause it's, for me, it's like free, free training. Yeah. Like someone tells you what to do, you know, all that. Show up, just yeah, show up, throw down. Show up, go hard. I'm the lead. same way when I train, I don't want to make my own workout. I yeah. What yeah. we got. I'm at that point in my life for yeah. sure. <laughs> uh, so I started doing weightlifting Um, competing fast forward, USAW level one, level two, qualified for nationals, like just built this thing. Dude, you went as deep. Yeah. Really, really hard. And that was about 2014 when I started doing that. Um, and then I was, and while I was doing that, I switched over to full-time coaching CrossFit and I started to get frustrated because I was so into performance. Like I was so in to getting whoever was, I was coaching to getting better at whatever the program was. That when they would show up and they're like, dude, I'm just trying to get it in. Yeah. I would just be like, you don't understand. Oh, God. Yeah. We're yeah. Two kilos away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? And so I was like, okay, well, what about strength and conditioning? Like, what about collegiate? And I wanted to go collegiate. So I interned at Northwestern Olympic Sports. Um, and we could talk about the setup as not not just there, but in general in collegiate strength and conditioning, the whole free 
unpaid internship. It's yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah, it is. I crazy. think it still goes on. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, nice. Totally. <laughs> the farm I, system. Hell yeah, nothing's yeah. changed. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, Northwestern was great. Uh, in fact, I like a couple of the guys there I still talk to all the time. And then um, got a job that was like a level up from an intern at Texas A&M and went over there and didn't necessarily work out but but i actually took my education like to a whole new level um i got my cscs at northwestern which is you know kind of the standard was working on the cscca and but i was also taking a class that was like the kinesiology strength and conditioning class and the professor who was doing it was one of the strength conditioning coaches and it was incredible. It sounds like it was awesome. It was seriously like, it was the f most f like formula forming or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. It, it just formed me as a strength and conditioning coach from then on out. And then um, I stopped working at Texas A&M and then I went like took a step back and like was personal training at Gold's. I, you know, I was just like trying to make it. And, yeah. me. and somebody was like, you should start making YouTube videos. I was like, what do, what do you mean? Like, I didn't understand that, like, you can create content. What was that, 2014? Like, I, 2015. 15, this is, yeah, 15, 15, 15, 15 or 16 or 17, yeah. I don't know, whatever. But I just didn't, I, I, YouTube wasn't a place that I went. Yeah. So then I started going there and I saw guys like Casey Neistat, saw guys like, um, who were like the fitness guys, like Omar Isaf and stuff like that. Yeah. And, and so I... Um, started making YouTube videos and they, they were, I'm, this is really long. Oh, just Alan I'm Thrall going, just going, hit me out of yeah. nowhere. Yeah, Alan Thrall, yeah. yeah. I'm, I started making YouTube videos and they were bad. They were really bad. <laughs> well, yeah. they should be, you've never done them before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and <laughs> they were really bad and I remember I posted one to CrossFit Reddit yeah. and I got this comment, this was also a life-changing event. I got this one comment that I was like, look, it's a pretty good video, but I'm gonna be honest with you you're not like particularly good looking. You're not like a, a hot dude doing something, right? We don't know what your goals are. We don't know what, why we should follow you. And you're not like that good at CrossFit. Like you're good, but you're not like that good. Mm. At, like that's a lot of Like you're not that strong. Problems. And I was like, <laughs> fuck. Like yeah. I wanted to be like, fuck you. you yeah, know? get right but, but he was right. He was right. <laughs> but he also ended it with like, what are you really good at? Can you show us? And I was like, I'm very, very, very good at teaching the snatch and the clean and jerk, Hell especially yeah. to CrossFitters, to beginners, to people who aren't necessarily athletes. I'm like really fucking good at that. So I erased all my old YouTube videos. They'll never see the light of day again. Wow, that was gonna be my follow-up. You still like, have them? Are these videos? I, think they've, I, I don't know. Have I they survived the test of time? Because I would love to see some of your early shitty work because uh, I've seen recent work and it is not shitty. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. Well. I guess I was trying to be a like vlogger. Yeah, yeah. you're being and somebody I, else. I was being somebody else. That was the first thing I did. I was like, oh, turn on the camera, be yeah. what they want you to be. Yeah, got it. So then I just changed the format entirely. I go, here's what I noticed after coaching literally thousands of CrossFit athletes from square one, or like from zero to snatching. Here's the same problem I see every time. This is the first video I ever have on my YouTube. It's like three tips to fix your snatch technique. Mm -hmm. And because I had that nuance and, and the way that I approached it was completely nuanced. It wasn't like, here's the standard, all this. Um, and I said, here's how you can fix it. And then that was it. And I remember I posted, I think that I posted that one to Reddit weightlifting. And then I woke up the next morning and I got, uh, I had like 25 emails. And at the time when you got a subscriber, you would get an email. And I remember being like, oh my God, I got 25 subscribers. Let's freaking go. And it was at like, it was at 150 views, you know? I was like, yeah. fucking let's go. So I was like, well, what would happen if I got 25 more and 25 yeah. more and 25 more? Um, and, you know, I basically put out a YouTube video a week for eight or nine years now since then. Jeez. So, so what'd you, what was your setup when you first started? Just your cell phone or? Uh, no, I had a camera. Yeah. I had a camera. Yeah. And I was pretty good at editing too. Yeah. So I went to film school. Did, and, oh, you yeah. did. Yeah. And I was editing when I was a kid as well. So well, I that's had a like, slight advantage. Slight left advantage. Out. That yeah. is a huge yeah. cheat yeah. code, dude. But, then, but, but I will say this. I probably at about 50,000 subscribers, I got an editor. So yeah, that right. was like the biggest cheat code. Yeah. But it's, it's outsourcing. It takes fucking time, dude. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Um, 
You know, you said something that I just don't want it to go unnoticed is you said you posted a video a week for how many years? Yeah. Eight or nine. Eight, eight or nine yeah. years in a fucking row, one after the other. Mm -hmm. No breaks. That's really impressive. During that There's time. a few, there were a few spurts where I took like two weeks off or something. Yeah. Right. Um, but the, I mean, I've started to feel the anxiety. Right. It's, it's like, like I got to pull one yeah, up. How many exactly. times did you think of just like, <laughs> screw this, I'm done? Um, not until probably this year. Wow. Really? Yeah. Is that yeah. just because it's just consuming and just another? Uh, I don't think it's like I'm tying my self-worth to it. Yeah. Always. You always will. And then when performance isn't as good or whatever, like you start to point? you start to tell yourself, like, there's nothing new to talk about. There's nothing new to say. And if I do talk about new things, like my my following won't like it. Right. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's things like that. But um the actual amount of effort that I put into making a YouTube video now because I have such a system in place is actually mm. not that much. Mm. It was like building it to that. I remember the some of the videos I would spend like 20 to 40 hours editing for like a five minute video. Yeah. Because I loved it. Like I literally loved sitting there jamming out and editing. It was yeah, so hell fun. Yeah. Um, but now it's like I literally can press record and do it in one take and send it to my editor and that was what, 25 minutes of my time? Mm -hmm. So I can't be bitching yeah. about- A little more efficient, 25 just, minutes yeah, for 40 exactly. hours. He, oh, so Zach, I'll speak for Zach here. Um, <laughs> Thanks, <Doug. laughs> Um But we both get messages all the time about like, how do you get, how do we get to where you're at? Or questions about growing social media mm -hmm. in particular. Yeah, And I, I feel like whenever people ask those questions, what they're hoping is like, it's, we're going to say, it's like, oh, there's some silver bullet. Right. Like it's going to be, you know, there's, here's, it's, it's two plus two equals four, go out there and get it. But like what I end up saying, and I guess this is kind of two plus two equals four is like, you have to do it, do it badly for a long time. Right. Only then will you get good. It's like anything else in that regard. And then you have to continue to do it for fucking years, dude. Well, I would, if I was to answer that person, I would say that the ad advantage is like, you have to change your mindset. Like I was lucky that I had the right mindset on an accident. So this is a great example. I remember being in the CrossFit gym and we were obsessed with weightlifting. Like we would snatch and clean a jerk every day as CrossFitters. That's like, that's like not a thing. What gym was that? I remember seeing videos you're in this like garage, like double doors. Oh, that like was, plywood dude, that doors. was late, way later. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. That was during COVID in my okay. buddy's barn. Yeah. It was the only place we could train. I saw that. I was like, dude, this is a sick setup. Yeah. That was a crazy. <laughs> but um, we were we were snatching, cleaning, jerking all the time. So we were obsessed with it, even as, you know, CrossFitters. And this one guy, he was a big, strong dude. And I remember he was like, man, I really would love to have a 275 pound snatch or like 125 kilo snatch. And I remember being like, nah, I don't care. <laughs> I, I I literally like I don't care because today I'm snatching 155 and like I know I'm going to get 160 at one point so that's all I care about like literally that was it yeah I'm lifting this me I don't care about what I'm going to lift then mm -hmm. you know so it was like I never was in this mindset of setting any goals I did still to this day I don't really set any goals I just try to find the window and then just like yeah. yeah maybe make the window a little bit wider or, or whatever that's it's the same thing with music like everyone's like what's your goal with this with making music it's like well i found that i did something and i found a little bit of success so if you have a little bit is there any way we can add 0.01 percent of success to that totally and i think when people make youtube videos they're they're not so like i made a shitty video and if i kept making the same video being like, man, reps. I just can't catch a break. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm just getting reps in. I'm doing what you're saying. If I did that for six months, I would quit. But I adapted to what that one motherfucking commenter said. <laughs> we got to find that guy. <laughs> we we do. Yeah, I know. Honestly, I know. Dude. Shout out to shout out that guy. Shout out to the anonymous, yeah. anonymous guy in the comments. The number one thing I remember from him, he's like, you're ugly. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, God, I can't help that. But yeah, so I, I took that info or whatever and adjusted, you know? Yeah. What are you good at and how can you tell the story? Well, it seems like you have fun with it. Like, even with your training, it's not like, if I don't hit this. Like, no one, I hate training with people that are like, their goals hit 405 that day and they don't. And then it's like, their day's ruined and blah, yeah. blah, blah. It's like, yeah. dude, it's Did you ever go deal. through that, though? Like, For sure. Yeah, yeah. I would imagine. With, I, with, an, another thing, like, dive in deep. 
if you want, if you can, you should get to that point where you yeah. where you do get pissed off from yeah. training or whatever. Because you have something on the line. You've seen yeah. the game, right? Yeah, yeah. But I definitely was like that. Yeah, for sure, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Both had but, those days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like you know, it's just phases of stuff. I think I was I was actually thinking about this with telling people how to like go about getting better at training. You know, because some people they just fall in and out of training or they've never trained before. And my thing was like the guys who train really hard and they they make their tra training like their identity yeah we look at that and we're like dude you shouldn't do that there's life outside the gym there's life outside this but it's like but i can only say that because i learned from doing yeah that so maybe it's a great way to get people to learn and expedite that process to to be a you know better person when it comes that's to the, the whole gym. point of struggle like to get growth out of it well, yeah, and you might not even think that you're struggling. You're like, lifting is life, right? Yeah. Yep. I'm attaching my identity to how much I lift. I'm PRing all the time. I'm getting my sleep, my nutrition, all that dialed in. And then things go south. Mm -hmm. And now you start to rethink your life. You might go through some depression. You might have some anxiety. Um, all of these things happen to me, you know? And then you come out of it on the other side and you look back and you're like, man, I was so stupid. But it's like, but you're the person you are now because, because of, that. of that. Yeah, exactly. hundred percent. Yeah. So I actually was, there was a vi uh, YouTube video I was making and this was hilarious, man. On Instagram, the algorithm had, it was an Olympian and he was like, this is a, a bachelor trip or yeah, a bachelor party with my boys. Or it wasn't even that. I think it was just like a boy's weekend. It's like 8 a.m., like scrambled eggs, like, but whatever, a uh, cold shower. And then it was like, 9.45, first workout, all the boys are working out. Then it's like yoga session. And then it's like the, you know. Eating steaks. Eating steaks, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Eating steaks, Golfing. Salad. And then it's like 10.30, lights out. I swipe once. I, sw I go like this once. And it's some dude who's 13 beers deep. Yeah. And he goes, I'm going to run the half marathon tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> he wakes up in the morning. I saw And this. fucking runs the half marathon. I saw that. Okay. Yeah. And he eats a cream cheese bagel while he does <laughs> yeah. it. And all of the comments are yeah. like, this guy's the GOAT. Yeah. Yes. Fuck yeah. So what... <laughs> And when I was making this video, the reason I felt the need to make this YouTube video was one, because both of those were back to back, bro. Yeah. It was one swipe. Yeah. And they were the opposite. Yeah. And the responses were also the opposite. Totally. Right. Guys who and he's a Olympic fencer. Right. They're like having a good weekend yeah. golfing, working out like that's what you like. Doing. I wouldn't mind yeah. that. Yeah. You know, sounds fine. But everyone. Are we kind of projecting this thing of like. Almost putting yourself up like this is how real fun should be. Exactly, people don't like that, right? Yeah. Obviously, but yeah. they do Get like real. the guy drinking thirteen True. beers and smashing like, a marathon and smashing yeah. a marathon because right. he just decided he was going to do it. Yeah, and so my thing was at the end of it, the conclusion of it, I was just going to have fun and make jokes, but I really realized like I want to be both of those guys at one point in my life. Yeah. That was my suggestion. I, w I wouldn't say like, hey, mm. you know, because some people are going to be like, I'm the Olympic fencer for the rest of my life because I love that life. And I'm like, fuck, yeah. Cool. Great. Some people are the dude who smashes 13 beers and runs a marathon. Like, great. Awesome. Probably not it's that painful. ideal. You're prob and <laughs> we don't know, too, what this guy does on the side. Sure. Right. Like that was one night. All the time. Yeah. He could yeah. be running all the time. Yeah, right. You know, that was one night of the month where he Could decided- Could have been non-A non yeah. beers. Right. Who's well, judging him? I don't know. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so so um, my thing was like, maybe try to experience both. Like maybe party a little too hard. Maybe uh, take your training too hard and, and ruin some friendships and, and mm -hmm. do all of that. Because then you can learn from those bounces back and forth. Now- that sounds crazy coming out of my mouth, but you you get you get what I'm saying, right? Well, like you, I mean, you're sitting in a room with a couple of, of sickos as well. Like I mean, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, I, yeah. I I I too, and I, maybe it's just kind of the, the nature of my makeup. But like, I don't learn unless I put my hand on the stove a couple many times. times. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So like the skin's bubbling. You got for sure. Yeah, yeah dude. Yeah, and even then, maybe I'll say, mm, "Here's how. I'll try it differently." But <laughs> um, but yeah, like I, I've. I'm a learn by doing person and I wouldn't have it any other way. And it's probably just a, because it's the only way I've ever really learned is by being in the mix, going full tilt and just seeing what the fuck happens with it. Yeah. Um, and it, it and I for me, it, it's do your thing. Um, it's liberating too. You know what I mean? Cause oftentimes when I go into stuff like that, I don't, like you mentioned, I don't necessarily have expectations. 
I just want to see what's possible. Yeah. Oh, oh, so this, okay, this, we could tie this back in um, to what you would suggest. I would just say as a fucking mantra, this is probably the greatest thing I've ever heard. Just, it's either, yeah, so low expectations, high standards, or no expectations, high standards. Mm -hmm. I'm cool with either one. I think the word expect is one of the most asinine things that people can say. Yeah. Yeah. I was expecting a different result or I was expect you like yeah. what are you talking about? You don't know shit about the future. Yeah. You have no right. idea. Yeah. A bomb could fall and explode this fucking podcast. Well, I was expecting room. to finish this yeah. podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. You know, that's right. Like, yeah. This podcast is for past Joe Rogan. Yeah. Like we're, we're fighting against him, you Damn. know, because we're both in Austin. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. Yeah. my thing is like you only do the thing that you're doing right now. Like you can plan to, Ex expecting and planning are nowhere near each other. Like yeah. plan, yeah. have a, a reason, have all this stuff, you know, but there's current things that you do and future things you just will never know. So yeah. it's, it's, it's dumb. It's a waste of time to expect. But I, so that would be what, something that I would suggest to somebody is not really expecting something at all, but having high standards of how you do things. But um, I have this thesis that these guys that I would call like hyper winners. So Michael Jordan, like even Steve Jobs, like it, it can, you know, go up and down. Tiger Woods, all of them. I would say that hyper winners do have high expectations. So that a lot of times, and I'm not saying all the time, they are insufferable as people. Totally. Yeah. That's like a that, list of people gonna who cry, are notoriously- They're gonna cry during training or they're gonna yell at their, they're gonna snap at their teammates during yeah, training. Yeah. They're gonna fucking pout. They're like, they're gonna storm off. Uh, they're gonna fucking get in their coach's face, mm -hmm. all that shit. And they're gonna have high expectations. Their stress is gonna be through the roof, you know, but that's kind of who they are. And that's kind of why they win. I, yeah. But, but I don't know. You're not trying to remember. I'm still, I'm conflicted about yeah. this thesis, mind yeah. you. Right. Cause I've heard Steph Curry isn't, necessarily like that maybe no. there's something inside him that is a little bit but like having high expectations that equals stress that will always because you that the only way you could have high expectations and be okay is if you can tell the future if yeah. you're literally right. a fucking medium or whatever yeah. to, to you know see the future i think your commonality is the high standards piece like anything you do, you should do it at the highest level. Right. So that's the, the denominator, yeah, right? Right. That's, but what I'm saying is like these hyper winner dudes. Oh, yeah. They're dealing with some serious shit. <laughs> yeah, for you sure, know? dude. Yeah. For sure. How many stories are we going to have to hear about guys who are just crazy? <laughs> yeah. But all they do is win. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'm like Lance Armstrong, Kobe. MJ. Go down the line, man. And I think you like, almost have to be that big of a psycho or a sicko to... Yeah, you have to be, you, I, you know what you do in that situation too, is you have to set up a life so that you don't ruin other people. Yeah. Yeah. Which you have to get hard. a big house, big ranch, maybe a hobby that is like, you know, like literally stop talking to people. Cause the moment you start to develop relationships, it will be impossible for you to not fuck with those people that you're right. Yeah. Yep. You almost have to be devoid of the ability to actually develop a real human relationship. Mm -hmm. It has to almost like everything then at that level of extreme well, it's winnings above obsession, everything. yeah. everything's transactional. Yeah. You know what I mean? It doesn't come about things, things about having like tangible relationships in that sense mm -hmm. where it's like deep and meaningful in that way. The only deep and meaningful thing is winning. the winning. Yeah. So that's where like the guys who are, are you know, anyone who knows that that's what they want and they're compassionate, there's something compassionate about them, they will set up a life where they don't affect other people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think if you start to get into like narcissists and some psychopathy and stuff like that, people will actually try to be around others so that they can influence them and mm, stuff like that. Use them. But I don't think that some, the, levels to, some, to, some yeah. maybe some winners that occurs, but I think there's also the winners who are like, again, like you said, devoid of all social interaction that they don't have to be because they're protecting others, dude. Yeah. Not just themselves, but like, you this know. This is what's best. Yeah. Yeah, like we we can't have a normal friendship. I'm not trying yeah. to be a normal human being. Yeah. Like <laughs> the natty. Yeah. yeah, Yeah. exactly. So I think that that was a video that I made um, on YouTube. I think it was like called Toxic Winning Culture. It was like Michael Jordan, Toxic Winning Culture. And I had a few examples in there of guys who I thought fit this. And um, it's really exciting to watch as a spectator. And people romanticize it. I was just about to, yeah. you took right. the words right and out of my mouth. And I don't want mouth. people to hear this and be like, yeah, I'll be, 
I'll have jerk Patrick, to everybody. Yeah, I'll be a jerk because yeah. that's what they do. I think if you ask, like, sit down, like, Michael Jordan, those guys, I think he would probably rather not be that way, but that's just the way he is and operates. For sure. You know what I mean? Like, how many bridges he's burned and everything, but at the end of the day, like, he's almost a prisoner to... His success. Winning. Dude, he and, only yeah. cried one time in that interview, and it was when he was trying to explain how much he wants to win. Yeah. <laughs> that's what people are like. Well, oh, that's what pisses like, me didn't off. His, didn't, yeah, like, people talk about like the mom. Think about how emotional that. that whole yeah, series crazy. was. Oh, and the only God. time he cried so yeah. true. was when he's like, And if you don't like it, like, like it. <laughs> yeah. All right, cut it. <laughs> but that's like, that's how much it means. That's how much? Guys. Yeah. And I'm like, yes. well, okay, damn. You know, that's not me. <laughs> Hell yeah. no. Yeah. But that's good to recognize, like, it's not you. But yeah. then yeah. even that, we're right now we're romanticizing. Yeah. Like, isn't that cool? Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. But it's, it's weird. There's like, this, this is why this shit is interesting. And my, my father, um, he's a sports writer, really well-known sports writer in Chicago. So he was, uh, a major part of the media during that run. Whoa. Yeah. And he had like serious access. He wrote a book called The Year of the Bull, which is a great book. It was way ahead of its time, but I think you should definitely check it out. It's awesome. Holy shit. And um, if I, I you I totally caught my, me off guard. That is awesome. Yeah. yeah. So like this I was, was so obsessed he, with Michael growing so up. So he's dude. in, he's in the, my dad's in um, the Last Dance. Last Dance. Get yeah. the fuck out yeah, of like here, dude. A couple dude. times he's in it. Yeah. Because he's like, he's one of, I, one of, if not the top sports reporter, sport, like he's one of the guys who you would go to, to talk about experiential reporting. I fucking love when we have someone on and I get hit out of left field <laughs> with some, like, that's cool as shit, yeah. dude. And dude, this was the gnarly thing too, is like when they go on the plane, right? You see them walk on their charter plane. Yeah. What's the first thing they grab when they walk in for entertainment? Because what are they going to do when the they're cards. on the plane? They'll, they'll yeah, yeah. the cards, but the fucking paper. Yeah. So they, and then yeah. they turn it around and they read the sports section first. Boom, Rick Tellender right on there. So I'm like, that's how big the papers were back then to then all of a sudden my dad can hardly get a paycheck for being a, a sports writer so on a paper. So crazy. It, yeah. It's not a thing. Like he was a legit, not legit celeb, but it was like. He's the guy. He was a very important guy because it was like everyone wants to read the back page of the Chicago news when the, the Bulls, Bulls are the, fucking playing. Right when they're dominating. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was. It was cool. So this makes sense with your film degree and then your dad, just a baller writer. writer like you've, you've always so had the art, artistry's. Yeah. And you've he, always had it. He would, he, so he played football at Northwestern, got drafted by the chiefs. Go chiefs. And then he got cut like right before the season. He was like one of the final cuts. They mm -hmm. loved him, but it was just a level up. Like it was, 69 or 70 and so the game had really changed God, what an decade. era of football dude it changed like in the last decade it changed tremendously like guys were getting way faster they were doing a lot more like one-on-one -on -one stuff which he never did he, he played cornerback a white cornerback whoa and he was killer too he like because they had a sick system northwestern had a great system they were a bull you know Is your dad tall he's six two that's fucking big oh. for a corner dude yeah and, but he was smart and like he played well and he yeah. al he also punted, which was a thing. Nice. So, uh, so was he was the punter that sicker. could punt? Yeah. Just lay your ass out. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. yeah. So I remember catching punts from my dad when I was like eight years old. So cool. But um, yeah, so, and he, so he w was always uh, like a literary guy mm -hmm. and someone told him he should do writing because he had been cut. He kind of didn't know what to do. Um, he had a lot of journals and stuff. So he, then he started writing for Sports Illustrated, Men's Journal, ESPN wow. Magazine, all of that. And then he got this gig at the Chicago Sun-Times that was like be our number one guy. And it was crazy. It was a crazy era. Crazy, crazy. It was awesome. Especially the NBA. He's probably gone so but he's But he's a very artistic guy is what I was getting at. Yeah. And yeah, this is what I originally wanted to talk about. The reason why he was so interesting was because he didn't really care about the sports. He cared about like the stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there were a lot of weird things happening at the time. Like he's um, a hall of fame voter uh, for the MLB, you know? And I think the NFL and college, like all the writers are, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. And he wrote a lot about the steroid era. He also wrote a ton about the concussions and when uh, CTE was discovered. And so like he writes, you know, the overview stuff, the corruption in the Olympics, all of this stuff. And if you look at my channel, it's a direct reflection yeah. of that. Yeah. Like I talk about the corrupt, corruption at the Olympics. I'm not afraid to go at, 
you know, the commissioner of the IWF or even CrossFit when they fuck up, uh, things like that. And I realized that it was directly influenced by my dad. And like, that's how I attack videos is what's something like if us three were training together and I, I we just started talking about something, mm -hmm. what is the thing that we just talked about? And what's my thesis? Like, that's mm -hmm. the clear thing. It's like, what's the solution or like, I've noticed something and I think it's because of this. Yeah. All I do is make that into a video. Yeah. I feel like that's what I did on such YouTube. a good job of storytelling. Like your videos aren't just like this guy sucks, blah, 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 or you should do this. You give like a almost roundabout. It was um, tutorials, tutorials on Olympic weightlifting and then basically five paragraph essays. You know, did you crush English in college? No. Oh. <laughs> Not at all. Me too. <laughs> no. Same. I, I became a way better writer, speaker, everything once I graduated. Yeah. Yeah. The Coach Em Up podcast is sponsored by Squat Wedgies. Tim, what are Squat Wedgies? Squat Wedgies are an adjustable squat wedge, 7, 13, and 20 degrees. It's big enough to elevate your whole foot and not just your heel. Because it's rubber, it doesn't slide on surfaces. It's 22 pounds, so it's durable and stable enough for even your biggest athletes. There's a 90-day risk-free trial. The shipping is free and get 15% off squat wedgies with our discount code, Coach Em Up 15. Coach Em Up up 15 for 15% 15 off of the best squat wedge on the planet. Coach Em Up is proud to be sponsored by Plyomat. Plyomat is a jump mat that measures ground contact times, vertical jump height, and reactive strength index. Plyomat's trusted by over 750 coaches in 25 different countries. It's something that you can use in training day in and day out to give immediate feedback and drive output and intent. Plyomat's always in stock. When you order your Plyomat, you can get it within one to three business days and start your training immediately. If you get a group of athletes challenging each other to jump higher, get off the ground quicker, it transforms that workout into a highly competitive, highly potent stimulus. If you would like access to the best jump mat on the planet, use Coach Em Up 5 to get 5% off at checkout. Again, code Coach Em Up 5 for 5% off. Come jump with us, get a plow mat. What are some of the big takeaways, like all your years coaching in person, like what are the big takeaways that you learned from coaching in person that have maybe like helped you outside of coaching? Like pursuing and dominating, really doing really well in YouTube and social media space mm -hmm. to now even a musician. Is well, there overlap there? So there, yeah, oh, for sure, for sure. It's like the most important thing, and you guys know this because you're both very experienced coaches, is uh, relationships. Like yeah. at the, the core of all of this, you're working with another person who has problems, you have problems, and like, it's like, almost like we put this mask on and we go, okay, time to train. Like, here's the best way to train this. Here's the best way to do this. And I think I, I really realized that when I started to coach more elite weightlifters, because like, there's, there's really no magic. I mean, well, there is a magic. Yeah. But we know for the most part, um, how to get your snatch and clean and jerk better, but we, it, it will never know how this person can and this person can and this person can because they live different lives like the controls are way different their brains are different the way they react to stimulus that is not even in the weight room is different their cortisol mm -hmm. levels will change depending on you know their their father could die like something could happen they could get in a car Trouble crash with the girl yeah anything like that and so like you know we talk about cortisol levels being like the biggest you know, issue when it comes for recovery. Well, like we can't control that. Mm -mm. So at the end of the day, the thing that we can control is the relationship that we have with the athlete. And even when you're, uh, when I was a basic CrossFit coach, I realized a lot of it too was like, you know, I don't, I don't want to say I was like a therapist, you know, mm -hmm. but I was some, I was a sounding board. I was a, a recognizable face. Mm -hmm. I could make that moment good or bad for that person, you know? Um, so that I think it, it, it it's across everything yeah it's across everything and that's like for sure the biggest thing so if i'm making a youtube video i think there's a lot of success in just telling it like it is people fucking love that mm -hmm. yep right because and i've never really done that i've done maybe a couple times i've always been known as like the nuance guy mm -hmm. and so if i'm the nuance guy i need to be able to connect with people yeah i can't be the nuance guy and be like Here's how it is. Yeah. Like, this is like, this is it, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. This like, is how it is. Have, this is what's really going on. I have to be, you know, personable, yep. which, I, which I am. And that's that's it for me, I think. But there are YouTubers, especially ones that I know very well. Um, I just did a video with Mike Isretel. Mm -hmm. um, 
And he's one of the guys that will fucking straight up say how he feels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, the last video I just posted is like, I don't want to say viral, but as far as fitness goes. I saw it. Yeah. I did. It popped up on my feed just like I think yesterday. It's up. It is. And it's basically Mike calling... Uh, Greg, you said a cocksucker. Like, oh, I <laughs> didn't see that part. Yeah, no. He, I saw you having a conversation with him just about like the end of his career, bodybuilding, and kind of. If when I start this video, he says Greg Doucette is a cocksucker. <laughs> Well, I've seen Greg Doucette, his shit come up on my feed of him being like, Mike has got to stop for his health. And it's like sort of like this. I can tell it's like, oh, he's utilizing this sort of Pop shock range. and awe yeah. and like rage click sort of. For sure. Mike's actually Mike's gonna be on the show in a couple weeks. Oh, dude, he's teaser. he's so fucking cool. I love him. What a solid human and being. That's the thing too is like, there's two different people. Like a lot of people dislike him because of they're like, oh, this guy rubs me the wrong way. But like I went had dinner with him and it I literally like was telling him to stop talking because I was gonna puke. I was laughing so <laughs> fucking hard. Yeah. Oh, you got a commercial, bro. Of course. Hey, I for don't premium. Have premium. Well, Jesus Christ. <laughs> No, Listen, I didn't. I didn't. I'm pay trying for to get premium. this podcast off the fucking ground. Okay. <laughs> I didn't pay for premium, and my roommate at the time, Chris Williams, yeah. who you know really yeah. well, uh, he was like, "Dude, how can you not pay for premium? Like, you're a fucking YouTuber. Yeah. It's your profession." <laughs> yeah. And I said, I said very clearly, mind you, this wasn't the reason, but it was a great clapback. I go, yeah. "I'm not giving them any fucking money." <laughs> nice. You know what I mean? <laughs> Hell but yeah. the reality was like I was just lazy. Yeah, yeah, for for me, sure, that's that's sure. the truth. Yeah, me so here too. it is. I'm being a lazy bum. Right here. Okay, here. The first thing, I didn't know about this Greg said thing. Greg said, who is a two-faced lying sociopath <laughs> sucker. <laughs> <laughs> We are seven seconds in. Wow. That was your guys' video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, and my editor put like, shit, 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 shit. Yeah, yeah hell yeah. You think that'll, that'll be bigger than uh, the Liver King video or not? Uh, No. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. No, that was a wild ride. How's the whole process with that? I know you probably talked about it. It's died off, bunch. you know. Yeah. But right, I think, catch me up, because I don't, I'm not in on the Liver King. He busted King. Liver King. Yeah, so I know Derek from, you know, More Plates, More Dates. I know him yes. really well. Um, and he came to me, like he, we were texting and he was like, um, who's your editor? I have a really good idea for a video. That's what he said. I go, Oh, here he is. He's a great guy. And he's like, dude, um, I don't know if I should tell you this, but like, I'm making a liver King video and it's going to fucking going to change the, the world. And I'm like, well, <laughs> that sounds awesome. Can yeah. you tell me? He's go like, well, would you be interested in helping me out with it too? I'm like, hell yeah, let's yeah. do it. Um, and he actually made my editor sign an NDA because we were we wrote and recorded this thing for three months or something. Damn. Whoa! Yeah. So if you can imagine me and me and Derek on a Zoom call, yeah, and he's reading the fucking charts, like the results from his blood work, from yeah. his blood work. But not only that, the back and forth, the email, yeah, all the where he's just like talking about the drugs he's using and how much. And I'm just like, Derek, stop for a second. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I've been making videos on this fucking guy yeah. forever. <laughs> how he's like the biggest fake natty on the planet. And right. you don't just have evidence. You, it's like. Literally. Email, I'd be like, oh, there's a car outside. And everyone's yeah. like, no, there's maybe there probably is a car outside. And then yeah. all of a sudden a fucking semi blows <laughs> through the front door. The front door. Yeah. I'm like, oh, fuck. You know? yeah. It was bigger than yeah. we expected. So then I got used to it. Right. Yeah. And we went to work and we started writing the script. My part in it was a, a position where I feel like if if I'm a black belt in um, doing you know, weightlifting content, mm -hmm. I feel as like exposing charlatans and trying to explain to the internet, like the tactics that charlatans use. I'm probably like a brown belt, maybe black, like close to black. belt. I feel very confident in my ability to do that because I've been doing it for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so what I did in, in the, the video, the liver King live was I explained that I, I really wanted the audience to know that this isn't just a fake natty where we have proof that he's lying. Right. Cause that's, that's fun for a moment, okay. but like systemically, what he's been doing is actually really damaging. From, yeah. um, and we cannot take away the steroids from like the the message and all of it being propped up um, because the only reason it was propped up was because of the steroids. Mm -hmm. yeah. And people, the first thing people do would be like, no, the message is good. It's like, yeah, it's good. It's been being said forever. Yeah. And the only reason this guy got it out was because of the steroids. And then you could say, well, 
it was worth it then, right? Because the message is out there. It's like, no, this was an egotistical thing. This was an ego thing. Yeah. yeah. This wasn't just like exercise, eat well, get some sun. Uh -huh. Yeah. And now my message is out because yeah. I'm ripped. It, right. No, well, I'm no, famous it was, too. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, very self-serving. Very self-serving. <laughs> yeah. oh, my, my thing was like, okay, what if, like, if you really believe in this shit, like, what if you just did it quietly or, yeah. or somewhat bigger? But, you know, it's this thing that we have in America, and I'm not going to go on some economic sociological rant here because I would be way out of my place, but it's this feeling that we need to optimize everything because success is never success. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the gr my example of this is Logan Paul just literally prime got pulled in as one of like the, the main sponsors for the UFC. Dude retire or fucking stop doing shit. <laughs> yeah. Like, right. I'm the, you're just, good. Just be, yeah, you're good. Like you're go, good to, now. go on your podcast and be like, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. <laughs> instead he did fucking, he did crypto zoo, yeah. which was a total rug pull. Yeah. Like, one of the biggest fucking scams ever because of why? Yeah. Because, of, because some guy was like, dude, you could make so much money doing this. And so like, that is the biggest problem, not just in fitness, but all over the place. And I think that, these people, they might they might start as good people, but they turn into charlatans yeah. because they put all their chips into these absolute statements and there is no room for nuance. And yeah. me being a channel where all I talk about is nuance, I go, well, let's Hold time examine out. that a little bit. Yep. So with the liver king line, that's what I did. I was like, make sure we understand this. And then I'm gonna send it back yeah, to my boy Derek here. And Derek yeah. goes like, well, he took this, this, you know what I mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, and I'm, I'm actually, you know what? I think I'm just going to say this because this hasn't really been talked about on the internet. We had results of his blood work that we never went over. We were going to do, it was a two-part series. In fact, we filmed it. Why so, didn't you release it? Because Liver King called Derek. Oh, wow. Like and I heard the phone. Liver? I heard the phone call yeah. too. Whoa. Yeah. He, he, he was crying. He was, he, no, no. He was like, oh, I got to say, I love it. Like, you know, yeah. kind of like, uh, but okay. awkwardly like, you know. And then he was like, man, I just really, please don't put out that blood work video or video, like whatever, whatever needs to be done. You know, I just want to make sure that that video doesn't come out. So, mm -hmm. so it ended and I go, Derek's like, yeah, like he's kind of weird about the line. Like you realize that means money, right? Yeah. yeah. And Derek's like, what? <laughs> he, wasn't, like, he didn't get it. Have you seen any movie <laughs> yeah, ever? Ever, dude. Any movie Whatever, ever. Like, case. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, hey, like anything that needs to be done so that that doesn't happen, yeah. you let me Wait, know. No, right. That immediately yeah. means I'll give you money. Yeah, right? yeah. I'll cut the check. No money was exchanged. Nothing like of the sort happened. Um, I hope I don't get in trouble for saying this, but whatever. I don't think people would be too mad. No. Um, Our podcast isn't big enough. Anymore. Yeah, my yeah. mom listens to this. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes Tim's girlfriend. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, we never put that blood work video out and then the apology happened, which I thought was horrible. Oh yeah. It was even worse. Um, but yeah, and that's kind of like, I don't really like talking about the liver king anymore because you know, there's nothing else to talk about. Yeah. yeah you know? Bad. Well, yeah, but he's still kicking yeah. it. He's, st he's, he's still killing By the way, this was the crazy thing too. He was, I don't think people know the depth of his wealth. He's like so I, rich. So I talk, So Mark Bell is a really good friend of mine. You know Mark? No, I. You know what? I, I feel like we, we've had it. communication, yeah. uh, but never any real. Not even like DMing. You know what I mean? It's just like comment sections. So Mark has a product, a bunch of products that use desiccated organs, uh, desiccated organs. So like liver, heart, all that stuff. Um, he has like the you know the protein shake That's with the desiccated shake. stuff in there. Yeah. Who do you think he has to go through to get desiccated organs in North liver, America? Yeah. Fucking Liver King. So Liver King like kind of runs North American desiccated organ market. Like Whoa. he runs it. Yeah, he runs the fucking show. It's like a guy that steals your kidneys. Like that's black market. He, that's that's like, mind blowing. Yeah, actually. So my thing is like, why not just sit back yeah. and enjoy? Yeah, your, like, dude, you got it. Exactly. You are indeed the Liver King. I think they're chasing fame and notoriety more than dollar figures. Like I bet if it was, he was the most well known man on the planet and had no money, he'd rather have that than a gajillion dollars and nobody know who he is. I think it kind of got away from him because that first video he made blew the fuck up. And so this is another one of my theories. Like if I want to play, like part of me feels a little bit bad for him, you know? Yeah. And I wish there was a way where he could be much more eloquent about how he felt like his own mental issues and things like that. But the fact is like he owned this, he was 
so rich so 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 rich and also before. Yeah. yeah way before dude this is like if you want to get desiccated organs you go you would likely go through the liver king wow even still so that's where the name came from then right originally i would assume yeah sure and like it just it does i mean liver is incredibly beneficial from like a micronutrient standpoint it's yeah. ridiculous um but so i think what happened was he's like you know I don't have any presence online at all. Yeah. And I think for someone to be like, yeah, I want to have some sort of presence. But I, th I think what I'm doing is cool. I think what I have to say is pretty cool. And also I'm like fucking jacked. Dude's jacked out of his mind. Crazy, yeah. crazy peeled. And like the workouts that I do, I know people aren't doing. Yeah. So he's like, I've got a lot of money. I'm going to find the best production company. Yeah. I'm just going to do it. See what happens. So he got the best production company and he did that crazy workout where he's like holding the kettlebells and yeah, the sled drag. Call, he calls it like the barbarian or something. Mm -hmm. And it got millions of views. Yeah. There was no build up to that. There was no public speaking before that. It was just that video. Now Liver King's a thing. <laughs> and he goes, well, if I did that one yeah. time, like what would happen if I did it 50 times, 100 right. times? Like then he became the, the Liver King and right. then it got too far. So now there's no turning back. Yep. You know? It happened so fast. So, so fast, dude. And the craziest thing in those emails was like, I am going to have, he said, I am going to have a million Instagram followers by this time. By that time, he had four million. Whoa. It was like, holy shit, this dude called his fucking yeah, shot. He really did. Yeah, he, and undersold. What? Undersold. Yeah, undersold. By a lot. Yeah. And wow. this was hey, he all, he said all of this to yes. the guy he wanted to do his drugs with. Yeah. Like, this was he said all of this. He's like, this is my plan. I'm going to do this. I'm, I want the best coach who can coach me through using these drugs. Yeah. My, you know, my nutrition's incredible. All of this shit. Like I'm lining everything up because I've got the money. I've got the time. This is all I care about. It and sucks because like on one end, it's like, you know, on a, at least for me, on like a, you know, moral ethical level, I give a fuck. Right. Like I, no one gives, I don't give a shit about <laughs> right. the guy. Get, Get loaded, get peeled out of your mind, take all the drugs you want, dude. Yeah. Go nuts. For sure. Yeah. That's but fucking it's, awesome to watch. It's the lie that is attached to other moral issues. Totally. Right? Even the lie itself, I don't even care about that much. Yeah. Like, I literally don't. Yeah. If someone's being a fake natty, like, great. All right, whatever. Fuck off. Have yeah. fun. Yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> cool. And, and, but the moment that they start to add in these little things and then that becomes part of it, it's like, that's where I start to have an issue. And that's mm. what I wanted to explain with the liver king thing. Yeah. And so now like that the video I just did with Dr. Mike, we were talking about charlatans in the space and stuff like that. And in it, he said those things about Greg Doucette. So I had to pry a little bit. Yeah. And yeah, it's just like, it's always present for me. What is Greg's whole thing anyway? Like what is, well, is, is it him just commenting on other people's stuff? Or yeah, well, the only thing I've ever seen from him, actually not I'm thinking about it out loud, is just him talking shit about so, Mike. Yeah. So me, for, for me, I like to argue on behalf of the guys, like even Dr. Mike, or I know Greg, like we've spoken, we send voice messages to each other. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not going to say he's a homie, but like, we're, we're very familiar with each other. Mm -hmm. And I don't like, I like to argue on, on, his, on his behalf so that I can understand where things may go wrong and all of that. Mm -hmm. So what I see with him was like, I like his stance on, and same thing with Derek and a lot of these guys, even Dr. Mike, on steroids and being like, I've done a lot of steroids. I was a bodybuilder. Like, this shit is serious. Right. Um, so no matter what we say here, like, if you want to do trend, like, just know that I would say, don't do it. <laughs> you know? And, <laughs> right. And, and here's and, why. Yeah. And, Two. And, yeah. And um, Greg has pretty much always done that. Okay. And he also is like an advocate for fitness. Like he did all the bullshit. Like we talked about before. Mm. I did though. Training is my whole identity. How much I lift is the most important thing to me ever. And now he just rides his bike and he's, he's in very, very good shape and he's a very healthy guy. Mm. And so now he helps people do that. So yeah. those are all great things. I think what happens though is like, you really do run out of shit to say. Yeah. And so if something goes viral, Greg just comments on it. Yeah. And then now you have a system where you just comment and comment and move and move and move. Ed, we were talking about people now will like, Tim will post the workout and then you'll just have a guy that just has his head right over, head over it, basically explaining Tim's workout. Yep. What he just did. I, right. yeah. my, here's my only beef with that is, first of all, I think when done 
from time to time or in a tactful way or in a way that like, you know, sort of elevates that piece of content or, or if it's complete garbage and it's like, Hey, like, you know, there is nuance, for example. Yeah. Excellent. But when it is the only form of content that someone does, and by that, I mean more specifically on Instagram where it's like, I'll go to a coach's page and it's literally every single one is just a head and someone else's content just pulled from the corners of the the internet. And it's, it, there's never any actual information given or any real opinions. It's like, and uh, you see this, now they're doing a uh, back squat, which is like a really good exercise to make your legs strong. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, it, yeah, yeah. and it's like, oh, you're only standing on the shoulders of other people who are making good content. You're not actually putting any skin in the game by offering an opinion, good, bad, and different. So this is the, the biggest thing that I realized, there's a pipeline for um, for creators. It's, you know, get famous or not, just like blow up a little bit. And then what can you sell? And there's nothing mm. wrong inherently with selling things. Like I've, sell, I've sold things before, but you do have to have a creator's bone. Like you have to be like, I love making videos. Like th- at the end of all of this, like I actually love making videos. I love it. I think it's so fucking yeah. fun. Yeah. And I think for a lot of creators, it's like, well, now I've gotten to this point where my business, like Greg's business is fucking massive. He makes millions of dollars. It's it's now it's like, okay, well now I can use my crowd, my, my market to do viral things. Like I can use the algorithm. They talk a lot more in like marketing terms and business terms rather than creative terms. It's a business anymore, it's not a creative. Sure. Yeah. So like Alan Thrall has never changed. Yeah. He's always made creative videos. He is much more an artist than he is a coach or anything else, in my opinion. And I, f- I find myself more like that as well. Like I just, I'm a YouTuber, I'm a creator in that way. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas some of these guys, they do it and they're really good and it goes really well, but then they completely switch to being like, now I need to maintain this and now I can talk about things. And as long as we keep the train rolling, which is the American way, dude. Yeah. yeah. It really is. I mean, Somebody said, tough. just keep streaming. A streamer said that. Just God, keep streaming. I love that. Yeah. Just keep doing it. Even if you think, even if you get ridiculed two weeks from now, you could have a viral video that people will be talking about you doing that. And all that, whatever the ridicule is about, it's just boom. It might be gone. Someone might bring it up, but you're still right. getting the, you know, the, the back end, all of your production is still the same. And that is like, dude, that is truly the American way. That is, is it. I can't imagine putting out like four or five videos a week and like every day being like, all right, who we got to talk about today. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. That'd be exhausting, dude. Like, oh. So you were just recently at the CrossFit Games. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously it was fucking tragic. Yeah, yeah. Um, tell us about that experience, man, and just kind of how things transpired and what your takeaways were not just about the event, but kind of what you've seen from kind of CrossFit, I guess, systemically when it comes to this sort of thing. So I'm, I'm a CrossFit outsider, but I'm also very much a CrossFit insider. So I, the first thing that I got was a CrossFit level one in 2013. And I remember being obsessed with all of the content that surrounds it. Mm -hmm. So I knew all the names, all this stuff, and I've been following the games since 2013. So with, you know, and I'm very good friends with a lot of the athletes. I was with them. Like I went to the athlete area before the final uh, event and I talked to two of them. And I remember saying to them, I'm like, you know, the I've been going online. I know you guys haven't because you're fucking competing. Yeah. And I know I shouldn't be looking at comments like I am, but I just want to see what people are saying. And I was like, you know what's important, guys? And I said it to these two guys who are actually very important in how they spoke out recently. Um, I was like, people are understanding that you're sad, but they don't understand that you're angry. So they think that they're angry, but no one else is angry. Mm. So as long as when this shit ends, as long as you say, I'm very sad, but I'm also fucking angry, people are going to love you for that. But it's also the truth. Yeah. And the reason why they wouldn't say that they're angry is because they'd be scared of biting the hand that feeds them. Yeah. Right. You, this is this, you want to talk about the systemic shit. CrossFit has always had this thing of like, look, the methodology is different. It's new. What we're doing is different and new. And if you don't like it, fine. 
But this thing that we have is so fucking great. And anything that we do, it serves this thing. But the problem is like these athletes got so good. The competition got so good. It got so dialed so fast. So just like, yeah, we're talking these guys are at the tip of the spear as far as like exactly being good at this, that they are now just straight up professional athletes. Yeah. And they still act as if it's 2008, 2009, 2010. Right. So if there's ever um, a thing where it's like, uh, maybe we shouldn't do that or, or, you know, any sort of complaint comes in, it's not like uh, because there's no union, there's no athletes union or anything like that. It's not like, a, well, let me think about it or like, let's work on it. It's more like, yeah, but we're CrossFit. We're different. Yeah. Right. We do different shit than other people. And so there are multiple instances of um, negligence on the side of CrossFit that was always excused by, yeah, but we're different. We're different. Yeah, but it's we're CrossFit. Different. Yeah. It's almost like this militaristic mm -hmm. way of running a... Um, a sport that was, again, it, whether you like it or not, it is so professionalized. Like I know these guys, I'm around them all the time. It is well, their is that much everything, the dude. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it is their everything. So um, the negligence that I'm talking about, I'll be very specific about it. Um, in, And I might be missing a few here. In 2015, they did MRF, which is the workout that we talked mm -hmm. about before. Everyone knows what MRF is. Mm -hmm. They did it at... I think they started, I, I know it was literally the hottest point of the day when they did it. <laughs> the hottest point of the day. Yeah. Right. And they had Naturally. to do it, they had to do it unpartitioned too. So it was 100, 200, 300, and they went down the line like that. And then, you know, you have the mile before and the mile after. Ugh. So you had athletes from the weird plate carriers that they hadn't had in the games before. They had, they were getting like crazy, like rashes, rashes, and... but like, it was basically blistering. Um, and then you had athletes who were like pissing themselves, um, who one of them had to be put on dialysis. There was definitely cases of rhabdo. Hands were being ripped open from the bar that was Which those metal, are melting, hot. melting hot. Yeah, if right? they were getting rhabdo and stuff, yeah. like, holy shit. Yeah. And the thing is, though, they would be if you think about it. Because yeah, their adrenaline is high yeah. and they're like, I'm the fucking guy. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to fucking gonna win. fucking kill myself. Yep. And the crazy thing is, too, their brains are, they have melted their brains into being like, oh, it hurts. Nah. Keep going. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, perfect. They're so good at that. Yeah. That's like the whole sport. It's is just that. embracing so, suck. So, yeah, those people are going to be in danger. Yeah. So you have to mitigate that with so many different things. It takes so much planning then. It takes more planning. Yep. For a professional athlete, because they're constantly pushing past barriers. That's the point of the sport is to push past <laughs> barriers. And you get so many opportunities to. If you run a 400, there's not many barriers you can push, push past. It yeah. hurts. I'm going to run for 20 more seconds. Yep. This one is like, oh, it hurts. I'm going to see if I can make it through 300 more reps and a mile. Yeah. You know, and so people were passing out, pissing themselves. Um there was also another workout called the triple three. Also when it was hot, it was a 3000 meter row or something. And then, a, and then 300 double unders and a, and a five, a five K run, which is, if you do that at a good pace, it's kind of a okay workout. I've yeah. done it before, but again, these are the best games. A hundred degrees. It's at the games, it's a hundred degrees. Four time. I think this is where you saw Rich Froning, like wobbling. Oh you ever seen that video? yeah. Wobbling and falling and then getting up and walking. This is the fittest man on yeah. earth, right? And now imagine that feeling. <laughs> hold on, hold on. This is serious. Imagine that feeling in water. What happens? Oh. You fucking die. Yeah. So I remember also too, and that's man. just one, that's just one example, right? I could go on on Murph forever. The way that they responded to that was like, they didn't even talk about it actually. I don't even think they talked about it. And people were also like, yeah, that's kind of fucked up, but this is like, it's Murph. Crossfit. Everyone does Murph. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was an instance where, uh, and Mitchell Hooper talked about this on a video that he made where Matt Fraser was kind of starting to drown and Brad Fukowski, who's one of my best friends in CrossFit, um, was the guy who like kept him going. It was another guy. And again, if you, you can't, you can stop running, but you can't stop swimming. Yeah. You die. You're fucked. Yeah. So um, there's uh, <laughs> another instance. God, I you know, Brent Fikowski, he listed them out today. He posted mm. about it today because he runs the PFAA, 
which is the Professional Fitness Athletes Association. And he wants a union yeah, so and so he so wants to make crazy. sure that they know these things. Oh, one of the things was, hey, 95% of the events will be indoor because we're in Fort Worth. Yeah. Great. So the PFA, PFAA messaged CrossFit and said, we want to know how much athletes, should they be training in the heat? Can you tell us, should we be training in the heat? How, how long are we going to be in the heat for? Um, and they said, we can't, we can't tell you that. Oh, it's crazy because that's not giving clues to like events, exercises, But that is but the like militaristic huge, thing, right? You're right. This is it the is. Yeah. You, part of the CrossFit, the beauty of it is what we love. They, they love this term, unknown and unknowable, right? So now you have professions, professionals who are going to reach a stimulus that they don't know about, but they're going to do it harder than anyone. Right. And the water that they got into was 87 degrees. Oh, uh, after a run yeah. with adrenaline. And it's not like if this was training, if this was training, you might see athletes be like, yeah, that was totally fine. Right. Yeah. But you're now with a group of, I don't, I think they did men and women together. So I don't know how many were in it, but it had to be at least 40. If it's all of them together, 80. Mm -hmm. So 80 athletes Damn. in the water together, all running together, all getting in the water together, all swimming as hard as they can. He's, he's 100 meters away from the, the finish line. Oh, it's devastating, dude. And if there was ever a place where you want to be to make sure that people don't drown, it's 100 near, meters the, fin away. Yeah. near yeah. the finish line because yeah. that's where they're most exhausted. Yeah. So the negligence has always existed in CrossFit, but it's always been because of the reason like, hey, we're different. Yeah, this no. isn't the NFL where you can have a union and you can say, I don't want to play. Yeah. Like quit being bitches, be tough. Right. Because you're different. You're mm -hmm. special. But it's all under the guise of promoting or being a slave to us, CrossFit HQ. Yeah. And I remember being like, I wonder if I said this like to someone else, but I, I know I thought this. I was like, somebody is going to die. Yeah. Right? And, and mind time. you, it's happened yeah. in FIFA. It's happened in NFL. People sure. die, yeah. right? But them dying in those are always freak accidents. Yeah. Yes. And it's it, the name, the, the game never changes. So negligence doesn't necessarily exist. There's been places in the NFL where it has for sure. Yeah. Um, especially when we think about like CTE yeah. and yeah. and the protocols that go around concussions and things like that. Mm -hmm. But that was the big thing with this one. And so now athletes are, uh, as of today, uh, everyone to everyone left, made sure they were out of Fort Worth. Yeah. Today's the first day they're out of Fort Worth and all of the athletes are making sure they they put the word angry in there. Wow. And it's not angry that it happened. Yeah. It's angry at CrossFit. Right. Yeah. So now we finally see the separation of the two. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because I've known athletes for a long time. They've not always got along with CrossFit HQ, but you just don't bite the hand that Do you think they're going to, CrossFit's just going to stand firm and be like, next man up. You don't like our rules. Don't play. Oh, that would be fucking crazy. You know see, the mean? problem, see, I, I, it would you know be nuts. I mean, no? So I, the NFL does that. And it, more than any other association. But there is a union, though, there, that fights it, against them. Exactly. So, exactly. So there is power to the union. Yes. But the problem with that is, like, how many people, like, of all the top dogs left, and I'm, like, an up-and-comer, and I'm like, shoot, I don't care. Like, it's not going to happen to me. Like, how much money do you win if you win the CrossFit Games? Well, like 300K. Well, but, that's the, with same, all the sponsorship. The deals. All the You'd be a millionaire. Top. You're probably a million. Yeah. 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 I know Matt made quite a few yeah. dollars. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. work out. Yeah. What a stud. Um, yeah, that's they have to do some sort of players union. But I'm interested to see CrossFit's response. Well, I think some yeah. heads have to roll. Yeah. If I had to guess, I if again, who knows? Yeah. Because they've done some crazy shit. And it's not just what's crazy is on the business side of CrossFit too, and I've been very vocal about this, they've done crazy things, all in the name of being different and mm -hmm. special. And again, if I want to argue on behalf of that, I do think CrossFit is pretty different and pretty special. Yeah. You went from seeing you know, these athletes doing crazy things for competition and you're like, well, this is weird. <laughs> to the clean event from this year, almost everyone cleaned 165 kilos. It's nuts. Fuck. And by the way, the event before that was 1,000 step overs with a vest. Dude. Yeah, that's nuts. Oh that was my the event before God. that. Yeah. And I was like, 
I needed to take a fucking beat there and be like, 165 is for me, my best ever clean was 176. And I, I did that without the step overs. Well, I mean, I, I <laughs> all my whole life was yeah. clean and jerking and yeah. snatching. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, and so this is a different thing. And it is very magical in the way that they were able to get there in less than 20 years. Yep. Yeah. Like it is special in that way. But again, it become it can become too much. Mm-hmm. And I think like CrossFit's entering its like Kanye era, you know, where it's like, dude, Kanye, the shit that he did was fucking incredible. But to a certain extent, you can't always be the artistic, you know, incredible, just unique you versus the world thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have to bend, but don't break to a lot of the things that are happening around you. Mm -hmm. And CrossFit for so long has been like, because people attack the shit out of them, oh, yeah. has been like, we're just gonna, we're not gonna back down a fucking inch. Mm-hmm. It's just crazy to me, like, why wouldn't you do not only, because you said it, they're professional athletes, and I feel like this is a scenario where, you know, I think about, I'm, I'm only comparing it to football, because that's uh, the league that I work in most right, closely, right. that I can associate it with, but it's like, <clears throat> you know, why wouldn't you do everything you could to elevate the athletes and to make them even more of the star and the focal point and show that they're taken care of. And because in my mind, in my mind, CrossFit, the brand, isn't the growth opportunity in the athletes and not just the name? So that was the big um, issue at one point where Greg Glassman, when he was still working there, he was like getting kind of pissed off with how uh, athlete centric the brand was becoming because it was becoming so successful. Yeah. And so he actually did some crazy moves. He deleted the CrossFit, CrossFit Instagram and Facebook. What? what? Yeah. At one point it was gone. Cause he was what? like, we are a brand that is here for health and fitness for the world, not just athletes, which again, like, okay. 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 Yeah, sure. Uh, but you have created one of the most powerful businesses. They were the, Largest growing franchise ever. I bet. Uh, like Whoa. not maybe maybe not ever, but at that time they were out franchising McDonald's, Chipotle, Dude, Subway. Every so major crazy. city. There's so many CrossFit. Gy- How many CrossFit gyms are there in Austin? Oh, there's quite a few. Yeah, yeah. There's one that is a block away from each. You know, there, yeah. there's no franchising rules either, so you don't. There's no oh, it's like, Wild West. You can. Yeah, it's totally Wild West. Hell yeah. You can also <laughs> you could do whatever you want in a CrossFit yeah. gym too. That was what. And that was you know these are the cool like kind of edgy things yeah. that yeah that was cool. And you can always make fun of CrossFit. Like it's always easy, you know. And but and this is from my position again. I'm taking a nuanced approach, but the the negligence has always been there in this weird kind of like not understanding how the public is important and you have to bend, not break at some point, but they didn't bend at all. They were just rigid in their ways. Um, So it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. But the the whole vibe of the weekend was just, it was just completely off. Like before the final event, I talked to Patrick Vellner, who's awesome dude, incredible dude. He had a great Instagram post. People should definitely check it out he's super well spoken him and Brent Fukowski who two of my you know the guys that I know um and I talked to to Vellner and he's like dude I want to I just want to get the fuck out of here time to go yeah yeah Brent had a leader jersey on and he's like I fucking hate this right now sucks dude it's crazy what do you think with the emergence of like high rocks how those are like standardized events. Yeah, safer. Kind of it will thing. absolutely be safer in that You think that, that yeah. will ever, you think CrossFit even works, worries about that coming over? Or are they just two separate things? There was a focus on professional athletes in CrossFit that was different than High Rocks. And the way I would say it is like, High Rocks has now become the next triathlon, yeah. the next yeah. Ironman, the next 5K run marathon, which it is a really cool one. Like it's, and it's doing very, they're crashing very well. right now. If, Holy shit. I think they just got bought out by someone. Oh, did they? Some, somebody. You I thought they got to start something guys. Yeah. Let's say <laughs> maybe it could be centered around your garage, which by the way, just, I'm going to rabbit hole real quick. Uh-huh. Every vid I've seen of you and the boys just slanging weights in the garage. Yeah. It's so fucking awesome. Yeah. You know, what's what fun? The, what are, that is the vibe, dude. Yeah. So that I, I might be one of the first people to do that. Yeah. I think we were gonna rip it off. We did a we did a podcast. Day. We were like, well, let's let's do a podcast where we lift. 
and now that's like kind of the gold, that's like what people do. Yeah. Um, we called it Lyft Companion. And it was interesting was like, they would get less views um, than anything else I would do because it wasn't a clickbaiting kind of thing. Like, you know, you want a good title and you want a good thumbnail. Right, it's important. And it, especially if it's something that you're trying to talk about. Like I, I play the game, I definitely play the game. But I'm also, we'll do like a 50 minute video where we talk about some bullshit we even like got into like animals that we thought were really cool, you know? <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. And like, and, yeah, and we would us. lift and we would get a lot less views, but the views that we did get, the people were like, they were like, dude, never stop doing yeah. this. <laughs> this shit. You know, 10,000 yeah. views, like a hundred comments, but all of the comments were like, this is the best. I think it's because it's I put so it on like when I do laundry. Raw and real. <laughs> like this isn't some guy in the backwards, like trying to do an algorithm cool thing. Like mm -hmm. you're just there camera it's you and the boys all right you're up i'm up talking it's shit cool. exactly right. it's the best and you're and you're not at we weren't acting for the camera either no yeah yeah so um you, we can't do it right now in the summer but yeah I, I will always be doing stuff like that for sure you could do a crossfit style and do it at the hottest point of the day <laughs> that would be <laughs> awful yeah. keep the barbell Horrible. inside before or maybe yeah. keep it outside no no let's for, for yeah. just you know to yeah. make it real blisters on your hands uh-huh um, dude, I can't believe we're already coming up on time, which is a bummer because I feel like I could hang out here for we like can a hang out after. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we will. <laughs> first year. Um, dude, we got a couple of segments for you, okay? Okay, yeah. Let's All right. Do it. Uh, this first segment is brought to you by Plyomat. Uh, use code COACHEMUP5 for 5% uh, off at uh, checkout. Um, this is Rant and Rave. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, it can be anything fitness or social media related. Uh, something that you don't want to see more of, something you would rant about, what it is and why. And then on the other end, something that you really like. So something that you would rave about. Okay. Can you guys go first? Oh, no, are we it? all going to go? Oh, I thought uh, this. I thought no, uh, 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 no, no, no. This is, it's, it's, this is usually just for the guests. It's you. <laughs> Rant and rave. Uh, I'm going to rave uh, the U.S. Uh, Olympic weightlifting team. First men's medal in 40 years. I didn't or, know that was a thing for the whoa. U.S. to medal. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. First men's medal in 40 years. And um, that year that we did medal... It was, I think it was a bronze, but it was because the USSR wasn't there uh, um, because it was 80, 84. Yeah. There was that conflict or whatever. Um, and then uh, we also had a gold medal on the women's side, which we haven't had since 2000. And before that, like men, just a gold medal for the men. I don't, probably 50, 60 years. It's been since we've had one. So it was, it was cool. Olivia Reeves is an incredible athlete and she won the gold medal on her after her first attempt at the clean and jerk it was Jeez. whoa crazy yeah so she did 116 just like 250 something in the snatch and then she did 145 which is 325 or something 320 it's crazy what a stud yeah she's totally a stud what yeah. weight class was that uh, 71 kilos. Good God. So, yeah, 155. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't go work what out with him. fucking <laughs> savage. Yeah, she's done, she's done like a 210 back squat. So that's like God. 450. Like full depth. Yeah. She's so much stronger than me. It's crazy. Yeah. That's nuts. Yeah. Close. Hampton Morris was, I think he's a 61 kilo male. He snatched 127, clean and jerked uh, 172. And he got a bronze medal. So it was cool. It was really cool. That's what I'm going to rant about. Or that's my rave. Okay. Rant, rant, rant. I mean, we kind of did it with the CrossFit thing, but yeah. I, I don't, yeah. Uh, what, what have I been an issue with lately? Parking in Austin, anything like that? <laughs> <laughs> There's so many conflicts like with, so for instance, if you want to do well in content, pick one thing, get really good at it, never change. Never be a master of none. But the the thing is, like, I think that humans are multidimensional in, in a certain way. You can be good at multiple things and you can be you can change that level of good depending on different seasons or whatever. So if mm -hmm. your cardio is really good and you're not that strong, well, maybe in the winter you get really strong and your cardio is not that good. Right. Mm -hmm. That sort of thing can happen to people mentally, but it doesn't work in, in social media. You'll never be rewarded for being for doing multiple things. And I think that's w patently one of my biggest issues. I think. Why is that you can't be like a renaissance man or woman? Because, if... so what 
uh, my theory about that is I was obsessed with weightlifting. I still am. I still love that sport. Yeah. So who right now is obsessed with weightlifting or who right now is obsessed with the gym and by proxy is obsessed with weightlifting because I'm a creator for that. A lot of people. So I got a lot of followers. They're in this moment in their lives where it's like, that's what I want right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I can't, for me? I can't fault them for that. Yeah. So if I do something different, they're going to be like, what? that wasn't what I signed up for. Yeah. yeah. Right. This isn't, this isn't, these aren't the terms we agreed on. <laughs> yeah. So there's moments in people's lives, but yeah. the problem is like the algorithms have kind of made it. So like that, they, that is even more extreme, oh. you know? So I see what you're saying. You can be really good at other things and nobody, and, and it won't be successful on algorithms or anything like that. Um, and that's, that's the biggest shame that I think is with this whole thing, you know, um, you can always create a new page and start from scratch and all that's of that. Annoying. It's annoying, but that's kind of what, yeah, at least when with like music and stuff like that, like, um, I think that's part of my issue with it, but mm -hmm. it's also nice to have something to fight against. For sure. I got a little bit of a chip on my shoulder. You know? <gasps> that was, dude, that was like the, with weightlifting. I'm the guy that, that is too tall, too skinny. Too hot. Too you hot. <laughs> Definitely not. Look at that. Yeah. So yeah, and and it was like, okay, well, I have that thing to fight against. Yeah. Which, again, I know we're supposed to be ending, but this was a very You're, cool. This is something. Continue, I, please. I actually kind of want to end end with this one. There's a there's an interview with Jack White, and he said nothing good has ever come from convenience, and he was like, dude, this was the hardest shit I've ever seen. Jack White is like a real like frontier man. He's okay. so awesome. Every interview I've ever seen. He before. is the fucking shit. And this one, <laughs> he, he was like, go make an album in four days, make it for cheap. Like, go, you know, stress out. Um, he, he said, I put my picks on top of my amp, which were over there. So if I drop a pick, I'm strumming with my finger and I'm walking to the amp, grabbing it, coming back, like getting back on the mic. I don't put it in a convenient location. I put my, my guitar I play is a piece of shit. I bought it off a of Sears magazine. <laughs> this is the, you know, one of the better guitar yeah. players alive right now. Yeah. And the reason is like people can tell when things are easy for you. And the shit you come up with is not going to be as good as the shit that you could come up with when things are harder. When, you know, and I was like, oh my God. Well, it's that, so good. I mean, look at any, look at artists over the course of time, you know, artists who are in pain. Who are, who are who have been through some stuff who haven't processed things the albums are fucking so good. bangers so and good. then you get money and a therapist and a hot wife in a beach home and it softens up a little yeah. bit so you have to so look i would also say go get the bag like go make your life more convenient that's, that's great. kind of great i love it's awesome. that awesome um we all drive cars that we bought you know that we would be dream dreaming of driving you know, back in the day. For sure. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that, but you can create the envi environment artificially. Like, let's say, yeah. so if you are making that next record and you have a little bit more money, like how can we create stress to be like, this is who we are now? Yeah. Like, you know, um, if, if you have to stay at some Airbnb and like all you're focusing on is creating this thing and you yeah. get pissed off because you don't get to see your wife and your kids and like things aren't as easy. Now you can kind of, artificially make that happen mm, yeah and so that dude i swear when i saw that interview i probably saw it a decade ago or maybe even longer ago and it's always 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 stuck with me and you know kiriakos grizzly yeah you know the big fucking the big legend greek yeah. guy who just like pulls yes yes the weightlifter the one he, that yells yeah he's the <laughs> fucking man. dude <laughs> so awesome somebody said why do you do this on a comment and he goes, for the difficult. Tight. Fuck yes. Right? You need to get that. Pat it on my neck, dude. <laughs> yes. For the difficult. And I go, yes. okay, well, that's fucking Jack White right there. It's the yeah. same fucking reason. Yeah. Why do you do this? For the difficult. For the yeah. difficult. So anyone Sounds out like there, a... do it for the difficult. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what a bad. We, we're putting it on a shirt, dude. Zach, you get that one. I'll get the last one. Right. Oh, yeah. I got yeah. you. I got you. All right. All right. So this next uh, segment is brought to you by Squat Wedgies. Um, use code Coach em Up 15 for 15% off at checkout. Okay. So uh, this is three things. And these are going to be three pieces of information that you would give to someone, no matter where they're at in mm -hmm. their life, to get to where you're at right now. 
Okay, um, try to not become like cogn cognitively dissonant. And I think that, you know, it's like try to have self-awareness and it's okay if you don't know yourself, but like, don't be afraid to try new things to figure that out. Like you have to run an auditing process to figure out what you wanna do, who you wanna be, where you wanna go. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, they'll get afraid to even get into that process. And so, um, and then they'll try the thing that they wanna do and they'll fail, 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 and they'll get even more depressed. But the thing that they wanna do, like they don't know how gifted they would be at this one thing, mm -hmm. right? So that would be one piece of advice. The other one is, you know, that goes along with it is like limit your expectations. Like we talked about before, Yeah. limit or almost delete any expectations um, and become more process oriented. And those were things that like, I didn't tell myself to do. It was just kind of natural because I wanted to get better. I wanted to gain one kilo in weightlifting and I loved it. It's all I thought about all day. And I wanted to gain one subscriber, you know, every day I could. And that's, they ran alongside each other. Um, and this, this goes alongside it. My mantra, I have it, you know, written here. It's at the end of every one of my videos. It's no excuses, just improve. And I think that one thing that I said in a video, and it, this was, eight years ago. And I, I think I was talking on a podcast on what that really meant. And the th there's two things. The first one was, I'll see you tomorrow. Like, oh, you didn't improve today. You know, no excuses, imp just improve. Yeah. Sounds like a rig rigid, like hard. kind of hard, harsh thing. But what it means is like, you're going to show up tomorrow. Yep. So go home. Oh, you couldn't snatch what you wanted to snatch. Great. I'll see you tomorrow. You know, that's, that's the essence of this. It's like, because you love it so much, you're going to show up tomorrow. And I remember, to, to add along with that, I remember saying this to my buddy Dylan. I was like, dude, you know the crazy thing is like, what are you going to do? Not train? Yeah. Yeah. Of course you're going to train. Right. Yeah. So shut yeah. the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I fucking yeah. love that. <laughs> Live to see tomorrow. It's all right. It's, yeah. It's like, yeah. I know you're going to be here tomorrow yeah. because yeah. like, it's not only what else you're going to do. It's like, you love this shit. Yeah. So- Every, nothing else really matters. Yeah. So that's what I think, you know, no excuses, just improves it. Those are my three right there. Solid. So you're driving down downtown Austin. Mm -hmm. You just parked your truck. You got out. You got your guitar in one hand, a six pack of your Miller Lite guy, High Life I like guy. Miller Lite. I do. You got six pack of the coldest Miller Lite in town. You're walking to friends to go rip. Okay. Mm -hmm. You see a kind of a lost 25 year old standing there kind of looking like no clue give him some solicited unsolicited advice i honestly what i just said dude <laughs> like but but um i i think um a lot of 25 year olds they want to like fight the good fight before they really know what that is like there's success right in front of them and they might be stubborn in the way that they want their success to happen. So like how they think it should look. Time how, yeah. And not just how they think it should look, how they think the process should be. Yeah. One of the coolest things that we figured out, I, I made this song, people change and we were making it in the studio and it was going to be completely acoustic. It was going to sound very rustic. It was going to be great. My buddy who's in my band, he pulls out this awesome guitar and he starts playing slide on it. And, it's, and I'm like, Oh fuck, that's, that's what we're gonna base the song around. It was what we said. We're like, dude, you know, if I was glued to the, to the process that I previously thought of, if I was like, this is not only the, the finish I want, but everything going through it, like that's what I want. Yeah. So anytime we deviate, I'm gonna fucking panic. Right. No, fuck There's that. no room for it. Whatever, what, like you have to let these things guide you. And I think 25 year olds really struggle with that. Yeah. They struggle to be like, they they picture the path. Yep. Of course they picture the finish line. Yeah. <laughs> that's what that's what like having a goal is, right? But yep. they also solidify and picture the path. And when the path changes, they're like, what do oh, I do? Oh, fuck. Yep. You have to like ex expect that and almost search for a different path, yeah. which is uh, for sure. I want to I show I you. I mean, and why you pull that up, I just, my I'm looking back at my own experience, like, you know, I wanted to get to where I'm at today from a training perspective, like the population I train with. And I had all these ideas around how I had to do that. I had to go to school for four years. I had to get my master's. I had to intern. I had to do all this, this and that. Right. And I was, I was enrolled in school. I was going to do that. Life showed up. I had to move to Austin. Didn't want to. I had to take a job working as a manager at fucking Lifetime Fitness. Definitely didn't Definitely want to. Definitely didn't want that. And no, no one's goal is that. But Sorry. 
But <laughs> I, I, I kept moving. I kept taking steps towards that. And I ended up doing the thing I wanted to do within three years of setting that goal. And I would have still been in fucking school, dude. Mm, I would yeah. have still been in school. I would have even started working for free. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So you, you weren't glued to that path. I wasn't glued to it. Dude, but when we go through school. But that was hard hold for on. me. When we go through school, they say, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. You'll get this. Right. We, yeah. It is ingrained in our it's brain. It, yeah, it is, yeah. It, it is ingrained in our brain that we should not only have a goal, but we should have everything figured out on the way to that goal. You can have certain things that you kind of might get, but again, none of that prepares you for your real life because right. the deviation of the plan is the plan itself. And I think we never fucking teach that to, to kids. Yeah. Yeah. I had to figure that shit out the hard way. You had to figure it out the 100%. hard way. You had to figure it out the hard way. Yeah. And I, I just, if I had a 25 year old, shake them. You know, like, you're just fucking, you know what is it? What are you doing? Why are you shaking me? Is it, is like, it, is I don't it know. Bill you know, Madison? Yeah. Where he's like, stay like, here shit. forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm going to go play my show. Have a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that yeah, exactly. was such a good impression, Jesus. Stay here forever. <laughs> so good. His face would. <laughs> you know. Right here. Look. Look. Here, you can hear the guitar. Two, three, you can hear it. Four. Ooh. That does make and it. And so that, like, jank, jank. Yeah. We didn't want. I didn't. Yeah. Never played it like that. Never heard it. But he just started fucking around on this thing. I go, let's go. You went away from the plan. Went away from the plan. And we didn't stop moving at all. But that was it. Beautiful. We gotta do a part. Duh. Yeah, we got to. Yeah. It's just too this much easy, fun. Yeah. This is the most fun I've had in a yeah, long time. Actually, I'm not even like, no, no shade to previous guests, but we, My, we had a fucking was ride. Dead the whole time. Same, dude. I <laughs> shut mine. I was like, fuck this. Yeah. I was like, if Tim shuts his, I shut his. Yeah, well, I mean, he like, shut his. I mean, fuck it. Yeah. Fuck out of here. Um, dude, yeah. we're so, I, and I wish that we had more time because I wanted to dive into the music more. Uh, and maybe part two. Yeah. If you would be gracious enough to. What's crazy is like I would have said kind of the same shit. Yeah, I promise you the process and all of that is identical, you know, so it's it would have been the same thing. It's just a different outlet, you know. Yeah. So we're we're real quick before we shut this fucker down. Um, where can people find you? Where can people consume your content? Where can people find the music? YouTube dot com slash at Zach Tellender. Uh, Zach. Not Tellender. Tellender. You can call if as long as you type it out the right way. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Here we go. T E L A N D E R. Um, and uh, Zach underscore Tellender on Instagram. Also, I have a Patreon if you want to do some cheap ass programming um, that I've put up there over the years. Just stuff that I throw, and that's patreon.com slash Zach Tellender. And then um, music on Spotify, all streaming. Just search tell my last name T E L A N D E R. Hell yeah. That's man. it. Oh. Thanks, Thanks for, for coming, coming on, on dude. Great. Thanks for having me. Of course. Later, y'all. Run it back. <laughs>